today I'm with Rick Young. This guy needs absolutely no introduction. I'm going to embarrass him horrendously. Sorry, Rick. Rick's the main influence why I do JKD, and he's pretty much one of the main influences why I still like I started martial arts. You know, uh, I'm going to embarrass him because I know he only looks about three years older than me. <laughs> but I used to follow your exploits through Combat Magazine and everything, yeah. and it was hugely inspirational to me. So it's you know, man needs no introduction. It is. Yeah, Rick Young, he's just awesome. So Rick, we're going to have to start at the beginning. Why did you start martial arts? Started in 1975. Yeah. I had a really good friend of mine called Sean Shanley. Yeah. And Sean was, you have to excuse me because I got a really bad cold, but Sean, um, I'd been training at that time at the Edinburgh Club, which is a legendary club in Edinburgh. It's a judo club. Yeah. Um, he had three instructors. One was George Kerr, who's now the 10th man. Yeah. Jimmy Delaney, who's uh, his throne coach, and uh, Morris Allen. Morris was more a groundwork specialist. He's now living in Virginia in America and he's a seventh degree black belt now in judo and as well as a first degree black belt in, in Jiu Jitsu. And so Sean's influence was from there. It was around the Kung Fu, you know, era, you know, Bruce Lee had just died, you know. So Sean started showing me some stuff and it blew my mind. It was amazing to watch him and I just couldn't believe what he was doing. So Sean started sharing with me some of the karate they had learned, some of the boxing and a lot of the judo, a lot of the groundwork. So we're kind of, he was mixing it in and then filtering it through to me. Yeah. So that was about 1975. Then in 76, I started to train with uh, Sensei Hamish Adam, who was Wado Ru's yeah. opponent, who was a legend at the time. He was third in the world um, in uh, Wado Ru, and he was incredible. He's a huge influence on me. I trained with Hamish for about six years, six and a half years. Um, and at the same time as I was training with Sean and training with Hamish, I would go down to the boxing gym and I would do boxing and I was going to the wrestling as well at Meadowbank uh, where, the, where the karate was. Um, so we were kind of, a lot, I was getting a lot of different influences there. Um, yeah. And that's, that's where it started. Of course, the, the first book I ever saw, the martial art book, was a Bruce Tegner book. Uh, right. Which was, which was like kind of kung fu, uh, jiu-jitsu tricks, you know, and it had little things like little handshakes and stuff you could do. Uh, somebody tried to handshake you and trip you up or whatever. And that, 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 that's really where it started. Seeing Bruce Lee's posters for Enter the Dragon, going to see the Bruce Lee movies when I was still underage. Yeah. I shouldn't have been doing, but I did. Um, so all of that was, was together. And so training with Sean first, he gave me an incredible foundation, incredible martial artist, but beyond belief. Um, and then uh, training with uh, Sensei Hamish Adam in 76, training in boxing and, and, and wrestling uh, concurrently, you know. Yeah. Um, and then in 79, September the 22nd, 1979, I came down to London, I seen Guru Dan, and he just blew my mind. Now this is a point where I have to look into the camera on this because this is an important one. I know this story. I've heard quite a lot of this. And, you know, first of all, I'm really honoured the fact that, you know, first of all, it, to meet you was a great thing. Then, Thank you know, you. To, then to become a friend, it, like, it was just unbelievable. As I've Thank said you. before, it, you know, one of the biggest, one of the greatest things in my life was to meet you and yeah. Terry Barnett and Bob Breen and Phil Norman Absolutely. and Rick Fay and then obviously Guru Dan. But, um, there's a, a, it's a, a story and an anecdote that I love about you and Sean getting ready for the first time you were going to train with Guru Dan in Osanto and you had a training regimen. I remember yeah. you mentioning it to me. Well, that, that, was, that was actually the following year. When I, when, right. when, I first met Sean, when I first met Guru Dan, that was 79. Um, at the same time, uh, he, had, he had the first seminar here. I never went on a seminar, but I met, met him when he did the demonstration. Was that in Birmingham? No, that was in London, actually. Oh, right. Central Halls in London. And then, um, excuse me, and I'd said to him at that time, because he was getting me to sign my books, he was doing a big book sign, I said, I was a 17-year-old kid, and I said, uh, Mr. Nisanto, I'd like to come and train with you. And he said, sure, kid, no problem. And I was like, no, no, really, I want to come and train with you. And remember, this is 1979, it's a long time ago. So he, he said, sure, kid. And, and I was really rude, because I took a hold of his arm. I said, no, seriously, I'm going to come and train with you, and yeah. I'm going to be your student. And he went, okay, I'll see you then. And it was five years before I actually got to see him in LA. It was 84 before I went, before right. I could get the money to go. But the following year, 1980, Sean and I went down to Birmingham to see him. And the, the, as that story is the, 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 the night before we were going to go down, Sean said, we should do something. This is like 11 o'clock at night. So we should do something to prove we're worthy. I'm going to see Guru Dan. So basically, um, I, did, uh, I went home and I did like three and a half thousand setups. It took three and a half hours. Sean did 5,000 setups, and I think we did about 800 to 1,000 press-ups. Wow. Um, and that was just to prove that actually we were worthy to meet this man 
because we thought so highly of him. We thought, well, we don't want to go there being, you know, not out of shape, but we don't want to be there having not put in a really hard training session. Yeah. So that was really just to say, listen, at least we'll put some time in to meet this man. Yeah. And then when we met him on the seminar in Birmingham, he was uh, absolutely outstanding. I mean, just on a, on a, on a whole, whole different level. I yeah. mean, incredible. Completely, yeah. completely. Uh, he's the first person that you meet and uh, most people, if they're smart, they just see him immediately and they'll recognise genius. And, and, and I, you know, that sounds really cliched, but um, he's just unbelievable. Right, so Rick, you mentioned when you first went over to LA, right, that I, know, I personally know the sacrifices, the amount of work you did to pay to go over there. You know, you, you, you held down two jobs, but when I mean two jobs, it wasn't like 15 hours one place and 20 hours the other, was it? Yeah. It was, you know, for me, when I always wanted to go and train with the Guru Dan, and this is, and it was uh, August 1978 when I got my first pay slip from, uh, I was working as a furniture deliverer in a furniture store. Um, I remember putting 10 pounds in the bank, and that was the beginning, I still have the bank book actually, of, really? of when I wanted to really go. And then subsequent to that, you know, things happened, it was hard to get the money, um, and then I, I worked um, on the door, you know, I worked on the door quite a bit, and then I worked um, as a, a labourer on the building site, and then subsequent to that, I worked as a postman six days a week, concurrently with being uh, um, a, a doorman for three days a week, you know, and it was tough, you know, and, and, and it is tough, but you, if you want something, especially when you're young like that, you know, you really want something and it really means so much to you, do you think, actually, it's a privilege to be able to to be able to get the, get the money and then go and see this man. And I've always felt that with Guru Dan. A lot of people were just saying, a lot of people feel that they pay money and then right away, okay, I deserve this. Yeah. I go, well, I'm paying money, but I could never pay him enough. And I say that to him all the time. I go, girl, if I could give you a million dollars, a million pounds for what you're giving me, I would give you, I would give you 10 million dollars, 10 million pounds, because you can't put a price on it, you know? It's how much, how much you're prepared to go for it. It's, it's like Mark Preston, my judo instructor, um, when I, I, I was, I've, I've been his only private student um, and I was do, working the doors to pay for the, the privates that I was getting from him. And he said to me, he put me off for three months. He didn't want me to, really? he just put me off. I kept phoning him, I kept saying to him and he put me off. And he goes, and he told me years later, he goes, Ricky, he goes, I knew then that you were willing to sweat blood for me yeah. to get it. And he goes, that's why I took you on. And I went, oh, that's great, that's really cool. I never realized that, but he was putting me off all the time. So, but I think it's a privilege to learn this material, to learn from a Guru Dan and Asanto who is just on a different planet. He's, different the, he's the Mozart of our generation in martial arts, easily. You know? he's, he's of me, uh, yeah, I think you're right, and, and of many generations, you know, I just, I met lots of great people and they're all great, you know, there's met so many different people who are fantastic, yeah. but he, he, there is something different about him. He's just an amazing, human being, yeah. an amazing person, as well as being an amazing martial artist. And his work ethic is insane, absolutely insane. Do you, so. do you, mind, do you mind sharing it? I was going to ask another question, but I remember you telling me, we, we sat down and we were talking about how you, you just shadowed Guru for a day and yeah. you got up in the morning and you tried to keep up with his regimen. Yeah. And you, 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 had to, you went and took a bit of a break halfway through, yeah. was it? I think, I think I'm really privileged because if I go to LA now, um, a lot of times you'll ask me if I want to go and do a private, uh, uh, he does a lot of private lessons during the day where he is taught and he'll say, do you want to come with me here, do you want to come with me there? And at that time, uh, that particular day, he, he started yoga, I think it was 6 o'clock in the morning and he said, do you want to come with me Rick? So he picked me up at 5.45, excuse me, we went to yoga, then I think it was jiu-jitsu, then it was I think it was jiu-jitsu, and then it was kettlebells, and then it was another jiu-jitsu lesson, and then we had a lunch, and then he went to a strength and conditioning lesson, and then he went to another jiu-jitsu lesson, and then he said, okay, let's have a little break, and then we're going to drive down to Orange County, where he did a three, three and a half hour seminar. And then by the time we got back to LA, it was, uh, I think about 12 at night, and he said, Ricky, he said, do you want to do one? And I was absolutely <laughs> out, out of it, yeah, right? Yeah. And he said, Rick, do you want to meet up tomorrow at six, six, uh, 6 o'clock? I went, yeah, no problem, girl. And as I left, I, I said, as I said, no problem to him, as I left the car, I was like, man, I'm dying here. <laughs> I'm going to see him. And I thought, oh, I still haven't eaten. So I had to go back to the hotel. I had to eat, get to bed about half past one, and then get up at half past five, get a shave, and get how a shower. Many, how, many, how many years ago is this? 
That was uh, that was about ninety six, ninety five, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, the, yeah. And so he was the, the, one of the one of the stories you t you've told me, which I, I like because most people, can, first of all, it's just the way he moves is awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been at seminars where there's just been this spontaneous round of applause yeah. when he does stuff, uh, and you don't really process his age. Yeah. And then when you look at because yeah, it, yeah as Rick, Rick Fay always says. He moves like a 20 year old, but I wish we could find a 20 year old that moved that well, you know? Yeah. Um, but I remember you said that when you went to the Inno Santo Academy the first time, he, and you told me that you were the same age as <coughs> Guru was at that time. Uh, and you ju it was like a sort of like was, a crystalline moment for the, you. The, the first time I was there, I think I was half his age actually because I was, I was 22 and he was about 44 yeah. or 43. So maybe, maybe a little bit older, maybe I'm getting it wrong. But he, I think what sets him apart is he has a childlike wonder. Yeah. He, he doesn't have no ego because of course he has an ego, everybody does, but he has very little ego. Mm -hmm. And so he'll learn of anybody. And that sense of wonder aligns with the ability to find different people we were going to teach him. Um, we were high level people we were going to teach him, aligned with an incredible work ethic. I mean, a beyond belief work ethic, which I wish, I mean, I, I can't even say I wish I had it, because to work that hard would kill me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he, he has such an incredible work ethic there. Um, and I think that stems a lot from his father, from his mother, from their, 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 how, how he was brought up. Um, so he's just on a totally different level. And align that with a, an incredible sense of humility. Yeah. Um, and you've got a really special human being. I mean, every human being is special. Everybody's yeah. special in some way. Yeah. Um, but he really is on a different level. So when you're with him, you know, you can feel like a sloth, you know? You yeah. think I'm training quite hard for this, but actually I feel like a sloth yeah. because you're comparing yourself to not one of the great, in my view, one of the greatest martial artists of not just the generation of this century that I've seen and I've read, read up on, you know? And everybody kind of, when we go into martial arts, we look for that man in Tibet or the man in the mountain who's, we were going to go to and he's going to get, be bow and he gives us the secrets and we're going to levitate, we're going to do this. He's there, yeah. And I've always, and that's part of the reason why I've continued to train with him, because he's available. He's there, and he's to ridiculously go and train with. generous with everything. He's there's no, there's no secret. Yeah, I, I always come out with the, the line secret stuff, yeah. because there is no secret yeah, stuff. He's, he's just incredible. Like, but he will give away anything, you know. Yeah. Like he was a, you know, you know, he was 59 when he started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu correctly, right? 57, yeah, 57, yeah, 57 yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And our mutual friend Bradley Osteema says he is legit. Yeah. You know, it's like. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and that's in every single hour, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. If you don't mind sharing the story about when you first went there and he was cleaning up the gym and you tried to help him? Well, as I was saying, he's an incredibly humble man. And he, he, when I was the only one in the academy with him, I arrived early and he was sweeping up. And I said to him, I said, girl, you know, I'll sweep up for you. And he said, no, no, no. I said, don't worry about that, Rick. Richard, he called me at the time. Richard, don't, don't, don't worry about that. And I said, no, no, girl, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take the brush. And we argued back and forward for about two minutes. Hmm. And then eventually he said, he took a magazine. He said, read the magazine. He said, I'm going to brush up. And the, the incredible thing for me was, first of all, of who he is. Secondly, I'm the student. I should be the one doing the brushing up yeah. and, or cleaning up. And the fact that he, he had nobody to impress there. It was just between him and I. And yeah. what he, he was doing was a sense of genuine, actually saying, listen, you visited here for, and you, you've come a long way. And he said that to me, sit down and I'm going to do this, you know. And I did. I sat down. And I felt really embarrassed about it. I felt really terrible. And, and actually, when I think about it, I still do. But that's the sense of him because he has that ability to bow or to stay, put himself in a position where he, 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 he will be... Um, not a weaker position, but a position where of, 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 of less importance than actually you would give him normally, yeah. you know. And he's just an amazing human being like that, I yeah. think, you know. Yeah, I've, I've, he'll subjugate himself, he'll subjugate his, himself uh, in, in, in place of helping someone else, you know. Yeah, I've told my wife this because my wife's not interested in martial arts at all. And a couple of years ago, we were in Germany, we went out for a meal, and Rick Fay actually positioned it so I sat next to Guru for the whole meal. Mm. And he was more interested in my life then, then yeah. yeah, and I, yeah, he was asking me about my family and everything, yeah. and I'm like, this is Danny No Santo, you know? Yeah. And it is, it like, 
that it's just a positive effect that I read a quote <laughs> read a quote on the internet you should never believe it right that's what Abraham Lincoln says anyway yes, right yeah. but um, it was it was I don't know who it came from it might have been Daniel Lanero but I, I maybe I don't know um, and it said that there there's pretty there's a pretty good chance that there's nobody on the planet who's been able to directly affect so many people first of all not connected to him but then the amount of people that have some sort of even a tangential link mm. and I, yeah I've racked my brain to try and work this one out and I can you think of anyone well maybe the Gracies I don't know but but the, the, I, I don't know what the numbers would be I do I, I do know there was that uh, almost exponential uh, thing going on there I, I don't know but I do know that his influence is huge yeah. I mean I, I, I don't know the numbers or anything like that but his influence is absolutely massive and far wider and far bigger than if he just set up a fighters camp or had a bunch of fighters that he got and everybody won a, or 10 people won a title and they go, he's a great coach because he had 10 fighters, we won this, this and that, that, that the other. His idea was more to spread the art and to spread um, the culture of those arts as well. So as it would bring, it would bring people together, you yeah. know. And that's a huge thing as well because behind the whole martial art thing, when you look at, he's teaching the Southeast Asian martial arts, you know, he's teaching Western martial arts, he's teaching uh, Japanese, he's teaching this, he's teaching that, he's got other people teaching at school, French, you know, um, and when you go into these arts, you also learn about the culture a little bit, and you also have an appreciation for other cultures, which in the world we're living in now, where there's so much separation, and so much really incredible, yeah. you know, um, um, distrust and hate, between certain cultures and religions and whatever, that he's saying, okay, let's bring us together, okay? Yeah. Through, paradox paradoxically, a violent thing, something which you're actually teaching someone to hurt somebody with. Yeah. But as he said, that's only done out of love, for love of, love of yeah. life, you know? So there's a whole, a whole bunch of stuff involved in here where he's spreading an, a really very, very important message um, on multi-layered and multi-leveled, yeah. uh, almost subliminally, you know, where he's, he's throwing us in, which again is, is a sign of an amazing teacher. And uh, as I say, I'm just incredibly privileged to actually know the man and that the man knows my name yeah. and, and to be his student, not to be a senior field instructor, not to be this, not to be that, but which is great as well, of course, but to be under that man, that's really what's yeah. important. And you being know? the company. You see this thing today, actually we're here for the JKD tribe, as you can see, very stylishly modelled by Professor <laughs> Young right here. And hopefully this is going to be an annual event, right? And we're going to bring it together. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Bob, that's yeah. what Bob's trying to get yeah, okay. it. And I think it's yeah. a great idea. If possible, we could do it. Okay. Be, uh, like, we're going to have to wrap it up because Rick's actually got to go and teach go and some teach of the him. secret stuff, <laughs> now, as they call it. But like, I'd just like to say, and I'm looking straight into the camera now because I really, I mean this. Um, just, I'm, I truly, uh, I really mean it for, oh, thank from you. the bottom of my heart. Thanks you've so really thank you. influenced me Thanks in so, so many ways. Thanks so much.